Yeah, we're on 79%. Never in 20, that's not too bad. Right, Sunday the... Sunday the 1st of August today. And whilst I ponder what day it is, I'll just try to explain a little bit of what's going to happen in the following couple of videos. I think it's going to be a two-parter. And the plan was we would leave Thurn Dyke at 8 o'clock and get to Waveney River Centre for about 4 o'clock. Well, we roughly about did that, but things were about to take a turn for the worst when we got to Waveney River Centre. And our ultimate destination became Beckles. And you will see more of that in part two, no doubt. But for now, I'm just going to go for a little walk around up by Thurn Dyke and ride the lion. And then we'll be setting off for the journey down to Yarmouth. And an interesting manoeuvre by somebody tried to turn around at the yacht station. Just one other quick thing. My channel just received a reward for over 300,000 views. I'd like to thank each and every one of you. And especially all the subscribers. Thank you very much. Your support is really, really appreciated. Uh, yeah, yeah. And it's... Quarter past seven. Going for the usual walk. It doesn't rain, it's not a bad day today for flying the drone. Not too sure we'll have enough time to get it sorted out from here. Actually, I could do down there. Hmm. No, probably won't have enough time. We're setting off in about half an hour for a long, long cruise. Down to Wind River Centre. We can leave one of those soon with all the excitement of playing bingo last night. Oh, you're here. You're going that way down that way. Yeah. How many times have I come up there and die? I've never even knew these, were you? Might as well try them on while I'm here. They're open. Looks like it. Hmm. And that has changed slightly. I think it's 12 till 3.30. Then they start on it up again. Taking orders about half four. But I think in between those times you can still get pizzas. That's at the moment because of lack of staff. Got that Joe going in there, he's already over six foot. I'll get through here. Sure, that wasn't the last time I came here. Well, that's nice. Well, it was the last time I came here. It was Thursday.
Now this is just to the side of the lining. You can't actually see it because of those trees. You can't see it from the beer garden, so you might miss it, but you kids can have a play on here. A few swings. Slide, a bit of climbing places. It's like a it's like a um, Look. Yep. Christine's, I think Christine must have been here. She says she's been climbing the walls. Oh, mm -hmm. Not for me. Mm, I could have probably done that about 30 years ago. little area for the kids. I better get back now because we're supposed to be setting up in 10 minutes. And get another lesson. <laughs> yeah, you can hold the camera. I'll do... Yeah, you can do it now. Right, so we've got the bow thrusters on. Uh, and we're going to rip this out. So we'll have to go all the way down the... down to the bottom. Yeah. So we're using the bow thrusters now. Just going to get out into the middle a bit. That's further straight forward, though. You did it slowly. You start going a bit fast, you can easily get to the near, too near the boat. No, I'm not doing <laughs> the meerkat. <laughs> <laughs> you can't be trusted. Everything you touch. Okay, Joe, what do you want? Well, you're sat on the floor, that Joe. Oh, yeah, you just shove that up there. Anyway. Yeah, I'll just yeah. have a tea leaf. On top there. Dad might want another. I'll have a tea, please, Lucy. You right, Joe? Yeah. 
road will be the more we go up a light tidy road. fly by didn't it? I sent Sue a picture. Oh she sent me a picture that she was having a kind of strong boat at home. So I sent her one of the boat. So she sent me crying faces. Oh. They had two weeks though so but it always seems once you've had your they're coming back beginning of October. But that seems like a lifetime away doesn't it? When you're, when you're wishing your life away so you can get back down here. Now then, I haven't checked the weather up. That's one of the weather girls. Did you check the weather? Oh, yeah. Better not interrupt them while they're talking, I'll never give me a right look. What's it saying on the debris up there? It's gone uh, a little bit more towards change from Starnie. Temperature is 18. What did it say on your phone when you looked at the app? It's going to be about 17 or 18. Oh, what about rain? Eh? Rain. Chance later on, and then in the afternoon, just one of the hours, just showers. Oh. Getting brilliant, isn't she? In front of the camera that long. Shower as well. Mm. The plan is for barbecue, so that could scoop the plans. Don't know. I just did it on the bed. On Facebook, I asked if there's anybody who um, wanted us to cover anything on the these training sessions that I'm doing with John and Russell James asked hi Dave if you could possibly share some hints and tips on driving the boat in the videos that would be awesome as I myself will be a newbie to the broad when I go down for 14 nights in October just before half term well I mean Joe's picked this up 
pretty quickly. So I wouldn't worry too much about steering the boat. Um, obviously you'd be told that you drive on the right side of the river. And I'm, if you've seen some of my videos, I always say I like to keep it just right central. I don't like getting too close to the reeds. Obviously you need to move over sometimes when there's boats coming the other way. Uh, but driving the boat, they'll show you the, the controls and that you've got forward and reverse and steering. And so really, there isn't much to that except um, keep your eye on the wash behind you. You don't want to be making a big wash. And um, it's the mooring up and the casting off that catches a lot of people out. And question from Well, I was going to do it there at Boundary, Boundary Farm moorings, but I, we'd gone past it before I realised I was going to have a test moor against the tide. I'm going to try and do that somewhere, if we can get somewhere where there's no other boats, because we don't want to be drifting into the boats. But, Mon Dan and his boat, which is Daniel Pratt, really looking forward to this. Be good to hear your opinions of the apartments. Oh, well, well, we thought the apartments were brilliant. Um, really nice, really clean, There's plenty of room, um, the only problem for us was we were on the top floor so getting everything up and then getting everything back was a bit of a, a bit of a grueler but once that were over and done with then that's fine. Um, one thing I'd like to see you talk through with Joe is the importance of mooring against the tide unless the wind is stronger and how much the tide can completely will mess up your mooring I had this issue on my last trip on Womack Dyke, but seeing as I had to moor alone, I had no choice. I think newbies would appreciate this guidance. Well, the mooring against the tide. So I'll explain this, but I'm going to try to see if we can do a demonstration, really. But I'll get Lucy off this beam with a rope, and we'll pretend we're mooring up. But we're going with the tide now. So in Womack Dyke the other day, this was, I think you've probably seen that video by now. Um, the tide was going in and they was pointing down towards the stave. And the guy off the front with the rope, the back end were just drifting round in the tide. So that's what happened. If we went now, you can sometimes more with the tide as long as it's not too, sort of, not flooding, too, not going too fast. Uh, but you've got to get off and get the right rope. So uh, say if we was trying to moor up now and we had Christine at the front and Lucy at the back, if, if Christine got off first and wrapped the, the rope around the post, the back end would just s s swing out. So that's what I was hoping to be able to do. Uh, morning. See if we can do a... Um, demonstration somewhere. I think it's going to be pretty busy down the air here. Hmm. Yeah, so... But sometimes you find that if it's sides sort of not strong the wind can be stronger and you would moor against the wind basically because otherwise the wind will do the same thing as to you as the tide would be and um, I've there's been a few times down here at Akel Bridge where I thought the tide was flooding or ebbing whichever and I've, I've turned the boat round and found out that it wasn't because um, if you print off those tide times, tide tables, they're not 100% sometimes because they could have had high winds that's out the sea that's pushing the tide up again. Um, so I've, on this way up, right. if you might show that for, if you actually press tides, and it tells you that the tide is falling. Um, 
More water is 12.18, but that's up here, so I think it's 10 past 11 down at Yarmouth. So, hmm, I'm guessing we're not going to get a chance to do that. The Acre Bridge will be pretty busy, but we'll see anyway. Oh, no, I can't do it. <laughs> Keeps going like that. Yeah, just practice. So Joe the Apprentice has now got an apprentice. <laughs> Trying to split his labour. Right. Now, I'm on the left. <laughs> Russell. Russell James, that is, who asked the question about going down the river. What you'll find is, and this is Lucy's first time. I can't do it. And of course you can. No. Keep, you know, keep going. Try. Yeah, keep, but you're not, I don't know how far. You just have to do it a little bit at a time like that. And just, yeah, you, you find it going that way. You'll do it like right a little bit. That way. But if you keep doing it too much, you'll end up like waving about all over the place. It's just a matter of getting used to it. Once you get to that where it's going straight, you just have to slight adjustments of it all the time. Mm. But if you start going too much that way and then you think oh and then so you end up going for too much that way you end up waving about all over the place so it's just a matter of little adjustments on the st steering wheel yeah. when you're going in a straight line that is yeah. um, so if anything else happens that I can think of along the way we'll sort of let you know so we're just going to pass up to the dike. I'm locking it in. Um, yeah, one thing though, Lucy, you have to be on the right hand side of the I river. I know, I'm doing that. <laughs> trying to figure it out. Upton Dyke. Or just right of Central. Me, camera's on. Hmm? Camera's on. Sorry. For peace's sake. Well, it's you that's um, going to get in trouble at school. Right, so we'll come back if anything. Oh, this is the, the Dalek mill, by the way. Look. Excuse me, wakey wakey. What? The Dalek mill, this. The what, Dalek? <laughs> Have you made that up? No. It looks like a Dalek. Uh, this is why you
Can you smell bacon? Yeah. I've got some as well. I just said to you, you that I'm driving, you went, yeah. I'm like, oh, I'm going to grab one Dance mats. I know, yeah. <laughs> so we'll be going there on the way back at all? Most probably. Well, do you want me to turn this off now? Yeah, turn it off. No, slow down. I'm <coughs> sorry, I haven't got the light jacket, so I'm going to do a. Um, Chris and a test more in there, but these need multitasking, trying to start the camera, and we don't have time then, let's pretend then. But. And we're not the other places. Possibly. Well, they've got more gazebos up now. <coughs> well, we had the one last time we were in April. Oh, nice. You see the My Girl too? Mm -hmm. That same girl, did it? I mean, I thought it had gone black and white then, I think. It's... So we're going up to Stokes, but that's Stokes. Bit. Getting a bit breezy now. Eh? Um, put my camera on for a reason, I can't feel like I think what it went now. Eh? Um, it'll come back to me. Oh, yes. So Slight water at Yarmouth this morning is 10 past 11. So we set off at 8 o'clock. Um, so it was a three hour journey. But going with the tides, we'll probably be there for quarter to 11. Uh, which isn't too bad, it's just that when you go over bread and then you'll be punching the tide a little bit. So if you're thinking of crossing bread and you haven't done it before, uh, well, we'll go into more detail when we get there. But um, Depending on the size of your boat, it's always a good idea to ring the yacht station. Now, I can see that the tide's pretty low here. We've come past Dotsby before, and you can see that building there. Oh, just a minute. No, sorry, not that one. I'll show you when we get to the pub. Um, see the little building at the side of the pub? We've been coming down here thinking we could cross over, and the tide's been lapping up over the running banking. When we got to Yarm, I think, which should have been low water, it just didn't happen. So depending on the size of your boat, um, you can get through, this could probably go through it, any normal tides, high tides. Um, but obviously, slack water is the best time to do it. We're going with the tide now, and then the idea is, if we didn't get there too early, You'd be going with the tide um, after you've got over Braden or going over Braden. Now, look, then he's not turning around there to go down. <laughs> Thought it was for a minute the way you were pointing out there. But no. Yeah, so that building there that is up. Blowing onto the running bench. Oh no! Um, so we originally thought of coming down here yesterday, but as I've said, if we got down here and we couldn't get moored up, we'd have to go to Stacey Arms really, and I wouldn't want to do that again. Um, there is a fee from the other end, I can't see what it is. It's like £8, that, but I'm not there. So, next thing of note is straight arms. 
So like I said, we've, I can see by the banking there that when we get to Great Yarmouth, we'll be, it'll probably be over nine foot clearance. So we don't need to ring the boat yard up really. Another reason you might ring the boat yard up is if it was really, really windy. Because sometimes the yacht, not the boat yard, the yacht station, sorry. But sometimes when it's really proper blowing a gale, the clothes braid enough. Or if it's really foggy. So I've come inside because it's a bit wet out there. So we're at Stracey Arms, which is about hmm, over in three quarters of you going at speed limit, but when we get a bit closer we won't be able to help but go above the speed limit. So the weather forecast is for rain for the next hour. Then hopefully a bit clarity, but then we might have a bit of sunshine later on when we're doing the barber. Get the chairs out. Did those chairs fit in that box? Yeah. The shop that is dripping yeah, in. That'd be nice, wouldn't it? But that'd be good. This is where we moored across here, across this water point. When um, the nice lady took her fees and then decided to moor, move us up. Or well, she asked her to leave and she would phone the police. Yeah, lovely woman. But we could have moved, but Majestic Gem really got a serious bollock in if we if just had to go up to Stokesby at that time of night. Well, after Stokes, we that um, Stracey, there are a couple of places for the emergency morning. But we're not going to try the, we're definitely not going to try it down here the, as the tide gets stronger. So that's for another day, that the demonstration of mooring against with the tide. So, anyway, the plan. Depending on the time, we are open to get in at St Olives and go to the Bell Inn. Maybe. Don't think that'll be lunch, I think it'll just be a quick pint and then back on down to Raven River Centre. We're the permitting barbecue. Um, what's wrong? Mm. Yeah, it looks a bit grim. So we've got the wasp in there up. I had a couple of wasps yesterday. Well, they won't come anywhere near as long as we moored up with the roof open because we think that's a wasp nest. Unless there is a wasp nest somewhere nearby, then you, it's a waste of time. Oh, some reserve a plane there. Ladies, take some toasties. Cheese, ham and cheese. Mm. Lovely. And you just some cheese. Yes. What do you want some with it? Mustard. I didn't know you put butter on first before you did them. I'm not bothered, but what? On the bread. Yeah. What? What about I it? I thought you were doing toasties. Yeah. The peanut press. Oh right, see. Do you want some mustard on yours? Oh, yes, please. 
Mm. Oh, there's a boat coming behind you, Joe. Overtaking you. It was a bit right, close Joe. to us, and it was really close. Yeah. That side. To the left. I've got better overtaking to the left. I said to Joe to go to the right. Oh, I thought you said. No, I said go to the right. Yeah. And that's not a beat. Um, George, do, do you want any mustard on French mustard on your heart? Uh, yeah, we'll do, please. Yeah. 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 This is a... no, that's a funny looking one. Yeah, there used to be a courtyard called Top Liner down at Upton Broad. Uh, there's not many of them about now. <coughs> but you can walk around the side of that. <coughs> so yeah, that's one thing you don't see easily. So I've mentioned this before. When you're at the elm and the boat comes on this side of you, you've no chance of seeing it. Uh, we were a bit close at the back, I think. I don't know what else I've it. <laughs> I brought the camera up like that. I always... Oh, I've never really eaten ham before. Well, it's gone very bleak now and the weather forecast is showing rain for all afternoon now. So, well, there's nothing we can do about that. Just change our plans a little bit. So we're about, I'm guessing now the time is 5 to 10. We're probably about 45 minutes away from Yarmouth. Possibly a little bit more. Chris, will you get that squeegee, please, for Lucy? She's going to hit windows before they get it. The squeegee, you know, for the windows. Oh, sure. Why not? Yeah, before it's not really snowed now. Before we get a bit farther down, we're going through yards. So I'd like to see all round it. Now, have I mentioned the law of overtaking? No. Well, there isn't a law, actually. Strictly speaking, you can overtake on both sides of the boat, but as a general rule of thumb, you should be going on the port side, which is the left, and so you're in the centre of the river. Because, as you can see from here, the view of that back end, because of the cabin, you can't actually see until you get right along side here. That could be a bit too late, but here, you tend to be able to see a little bit farther back on this side, especially if you've got your leather roof anyway, it looks more juicy. Oh, no, no, don't do that. No, don't. See, Daniel? See what I mean? Are you sitting in the seat yet? Um, yeah, so, and if you come in into Great Yarmouth, don't bother overtaking at all. I mean, it's just not worth it. Too tidal, too much going on. Um, the boat won't stop and turn on a sixpence. So Francis Armstrong, who's one of my subscribers, asked about going solo over Brady. And I said, well, the best person to answer that one really would be Russell. The Admiral. But as long as you've got your wits about you, the only other difference if you've got other people on the board is you've got more eyes looking out and maybe telling you you've gone the wrong side of the post, which does happen occasionally. But I did say that it's more along the, the mooring up bit, bit is the dodgy bit for me if I was on my own. Yeah, my nose wrapped in fingers. Well, now I'm cleaning windows. One on for the boat, one on for yourself. She has got a life jacket on. 
and you can get a thing called Rain X that you spray on the window and then the water will just run off. I forgot completely about that. Well, it doesn't normally rain on me, it's just all that. Oosh, 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 three times then, she didn't have that hold of anything. I'll have to give her a bollock in about that when she comes back. Not as bad as Griffin, he would even gang the style on the front of the boat. <laughs> Not what you need to do then, Lucy. You're not looking out of the bedroom window. <laughs> <laughs> this is like deja vu for Lucy because we were on one of the gems once and the, uh, the windscreen wiper didn't work so I had her stood out in the front, of the, in the front well cleaning the windows, wiping the windows. Hold on. I said you don't need to do that one. Well, she, she could be a window cleaner. We love her doing that on Saturday morning, or Friday afternoon, whenever we clean it. Come back in through the side here rather than walk all the way around. Yeah, good. Um, you did a very good job, Billy. So I've only got one criticism. Go on. When he was over here, you didn't have. You let go of the rails with both hands. No, I didn't. You, I, well, I it's didn't. on camera, so don't lie. I definitely well, didn't. Well, we'll see. Yeah, no, because I... You were swapping hands. Yeah. So, yeah, you leaning, always have one hand for the boat, one hand for yourself. I was leaning on my knee. No, well, okay. sorry, I've got one... If I've got one hand... Do you want me to go away? <laughs> I'm here, aren't right, I? Hey, come on. Concentrate. We're at uh, Marina Keys now. We're Can almost there. No, sure. This is Marina Keys, this is at the top end of Yarmouth. And the time now is, wait a minute, we have made good time now, it's only 20 past the time. So I don't know whether Lucy will get a wish of sitting on the, oh, you, you might have to take a cloth with you sitting on there. Well, oh, come back in then. I know, you have to grab that yeah, one. That's what I'm saying, there's no... Yeah, I know. There you go. Oh, God. Come on, get back in. Ugh. <laughs> Money? Come out, Pete. <laughs> get your feet. Money? We'll knock it off the bill, what I'm going to give you at the end of the week. <laughs> to be fair, I've right. probably hated it. It's quite yeah. satisfying. I'd like, send the shit and then you went... Actually, so would you. Um, when we are cleaning the boat at the end of the week, we. that, yeah, well, you you two are doing the inside, me and Joel do the outside, but me and Joel aren't very good at doing windows, and we've just seen you do a masterclass. So, once we've washed everything, the last job normally Christine does is go and do the windows on the outside. Well, the, the end of um, Journey One's £15, I'm afraid. Oh, yeah. More windows right, involved with that one. Right, we'll just knock it off the bill, like I said, at the end of the week. <laughs> so it's about £700 at the moment. Oh, it seems to be cleaning up a bit now. Give a bit of look. Um, I couldn't see a thing though when I was... Oh, you have to do it again, it weren't recording. Are you joking? No. You're actually not joking? No, go and do another one. They're all gone now. The pasture's new.
You want me to take over, do you? Well, we need to slow down a bit to see boats coming out of here. Can you get the camera then? Can you on this side? And then we're going down, can you get the, like, the yacht bit down that way as well? Is it on that yet? So I don't know if you picked that up on the camera, but yeah, so down, yeah. turning around here is a no no. You have to go past the yacht station and there's a bit of a wider space where you can turn around. And what are we on? Eight, nine foot, three. Nine foot six almost, so I said it just over nine foot. <laughs> but when you're trying to stand idle down here with the tide, it ain't gonna happen. It's bad enough when I'm trying to talk to the back of the camera, but I didn't have hold of the camera. Christine's got the camera, I've got the steering wheel. But basically what I was trying to say was the, the guys at the yacht station are telling this guy in front of us here to move on farther down. You don't try turning around where all the boats are. You've got boats coming behind you, you've got boats coming in front of you. And he was basically all he was trying to do was turn around to get into a slot. So the guys have told him, go past the yacht station and turn around. Now very shortly, his mate who's with him signals to us that they're going to turn around. I already knew that. The thing was... For us to all station behind him, while he manoeuvred and turned, it just wouldn't happen. We'd have just drifted. I mean, you can see in a little short while, I have to slow down right behind him. And the back end, I don't know if it picks up very well on camera, but the back end starts to swing round. So we'd have just ended up sideways going down towards Braden. So I said to him, just hang on there until we get past. So that's what happened and we just, I just wanted to get out of the way because the boat's coming the other way and I didn't know when he was going to turn basically. I just wanted to get past him because it was, like I say, it was really awkward. You were hearing that being tired here, trying to old station, it just, it just virtually impossible. Let's keep it. I want to get in there, you know. Let's see what he's up to. He's coming. No, it's not me. Alright. Let's just keep it up for me. 
it's five through here but we can't do anything at the minute because this guy wants to turn around and there's like a flotilla coming up now look <laughs> There might be no space back time when you get to See what's happening here is now, because I'm idling. The tide is checking the back end round. I'm going to go past it. You're going to go past Yeah, let me get past you. Good luck. <laughs> Why is he doing that? He's turning. He can't get here. All these boats can knock him to turn. I thought he was turning. Well, he can't turn yet anyway, so... Right, you Are you having this? Are you changing your battery up there? Oh. No, uh, no, I bet I just wait till we get onto Burden, I think. Okay. Right, so, you know, get over here. So, navigate between red arrows. And... That's the same on both bridges now. There's your marker, it's over 9 foot. We've got plenty of room, like 6 to 10. So don't turn around, you know. He's going to hit that, but he hit that bank in there, definitely. Uh, yeah. yeah. He did. I don't know what he was saying when I was, I was, I was about a foot off him. Yeah. 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 So when you come to the end of here, and we've, we've gone under this bridge and then just round the corner a little bit. Well, we're just a, a straight ahead there. See the yellow post? Yeah. You keep to the side of it, and then once you've gone past it, you turn right. Yeah. And then when we come in the other way, on Wednesday, you go past it and turn left. <laughs> yeah. You don't think you even have a light jacket on, do you? Yeah. Do you? Yeah. You right, the time is what? Half ten, so we're a little bit early. So we will be punching the tide a little bit going the other way, but it can't be helped. <laughs> oh, there are jet ski going behind us in a sun. Are we near Braden Wharf now? Is it, yeah. Has it? Is it working that now? I tried it the other day, but I'm going to try this. What? <laughs> so you say going right past this ball? Yeah, keep. Keep left of it and then. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, you don't want to do that. <laughs> um, right, so if we've got, if it's still ebbing pretty heavily, you'll see it will slow down a lot. What we're doing now, five, seven, five, five point seven. Because we've got the tide with us. See where that boat's going there, just See the two hours on the bridge where that boat's just gone. Yeah, that's where we're headed. 
So after safely negotiating through Yarmouth Yacht Station and on to Braden, uh, we're coming up to an hour, or close to, by the time I've finished editing. So I think we'll leave part one there, so please join us for part two, where we carry on our cruise across Braden, down the Waveney, heading for the Wind River Centre. We do stop off at the Bell Inn at St Olive's, and also then you can see, make your own mind up, whether we threw our toys out the pram or whether it was a good idea to leave the Waverley River Centre and not stay overnight. <laughs>